Listen, dude. I don't know who's not giving you a chance, but they should be. Because you're better than most people that work professionally with C++. So I guess uh, I've been trying to learn programming for the last four years or so, focusing on C++. Okay. Um, been applying for about the last year, year and a half. I've had very dismal responses and was almost just wanting to, oh, okay. you know, catch you at some point, maybe get asked a few questions and see if like, am I, is it, is it a, is it a me problem? Like, do I, do I not know as much as I even remotely think I do or, or okay. am I just getting unlucky in the market? Maybe. Okay. I think that's a fair, that's fair. So tell me a bit about like your background. What did you study? Where you came from in terms of like your professional experience? So I was actually a mechanic for almost 20 years. Um, I don't, I didn't even finish high school. I have a GED. Um, programming was something I was interested in as a kid, but kind of, you know, never really went down that path when I turned 15, got into cars and that's just kind of how it went. Okay. And where and how did you learn C++? Um, so just like online, like self-learning, don't get me wrong, I've taken several, you know, courses and stuff like that, but pretty much started with like, uh, you know, like learn CPP and, and watch a lot of journal videos and such. Okay. And what sort of projects have you done or like, where, where have you applied your, your knowledge? Um, so I, I've been working in, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with what GIS is, like digital mapping, um, and I've done several, uh, like personal projects for that job just as like, you know, just little productivity tools and such. Okay. Um, and I guess I did do all of Advent of Code this year. And what has the reception been like for your resume? So how many places have you applied to and how many places have heard, you heard back from? Yeah, so as of today, I think I've got 560 applications, give or take, um, all in total over the last year and a half. Wow. And so far as actual, like, I got, I've gotten less than 10, like, responses at all and have had, you know, probably five actual interviews. And how are you applying? Where are you going to apply? Where are you finding the companies you're applying for? Mostly LinkedIn, a uh, little bit of Indeed, and then like recently there's there's like a company called Hiring Cafe that I've had like guess a little bit of experience with, but not much. Mostly mostly LinkedIn. Okay, LinkedIn is usually not a great place to apply because by the time the job posting's <laughs> up, there's like 30 people that have done LinkedIn Easy Apply. Uh -huh. um, Today's video sponsor is me. I built this website called getcracked.io, which is a platform that has over 300 free problems and 600 interview-like problems, ranging from topics like concurrency, language knowledge, networking, operating systems, etc. I built this platform, guys, because I found that a lot of people were being asked questions that they really weren't familiar with because all they've studied is data structures and algorithms. What this platform has is a bunch of various questions that you are going to need to know in order to ace the interview, especially the knowledge round. It also has real code examples as well as a leaderboard if you're interested in being competitive and competing against other people on the platform. Well, let's now talk about a bit of C++. So let's start off with like just data types. So if I have, a, you know what a string literal is? Mm -hmm. So if I have that first quote, a couple of characters, and then I have a ending quote, so the second quote. Mm -hmm. say, do, you, do you know what auto is? Mm -hmm. So if I have auto x, just the variable x, equals, mm -hmm. and then just a string literal, w what type is x? Const chart pointer, or I guess const chart array pointer. Yeah, const chart array. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you were to answer const chart pointer, that's valid too. In terms of containers, what's the difference between a Vector and an array. So vector, the, I guess, vector objects on the stack, but then the, like, effectively the array, the data that it's holding is on the heap. And then where an array is just stack allocated and the size must be known at compile time. Okay. And so if we were to say that we want to take the size of a vector, how big would you say it is on 64-bit architecture? I think it's... Well, okay, so you've got the pointer to the actual data, the size T for the size, and then oh, I'm drawing a blank. I want to say there's one other thing, but I can't remember. So we'd say we got, what, eight bytes for the pointer, uh, eight bytes for the size T. I want to say there's another one in there, so it's either 16 or 24, but I'm drawing a blank right now. No, I see that's right. Um, okay. So yeah, good for you there. Um, the other one is the capacity. Right, there you go. 
If I wanted to create an object, this one's a little harder. If I wanted to create an object, actually, let's talk about this first. We'll, we'll start it off a little easier. What order are variables destroyed when they exit local scope? Uh, so reverse declaration, uh, the reverse of what they were instantiated in or reverse declaration. Okay. Now, what happens if an exception in one of the objects destructor is being thrown while the stack is already unwinding as a result of an existing exception? Ooh, that's... I don't know if I know the answer to that one. Um, you understand this scenario, though, right? Yes, yeah. I... I don't know. My assumption is that... Boy, I, I, my only honest answer is I don't know. I could take a guess that okay. you know either the existing exceptions just going to continue to be thrown. I, I don't know if you can throw two exceptions at once, or if the if the program would just terminate. I my only honest answer is I don't know. Okay, yeah, it would just terminate. It would. Okay. Yeah. What's the what's the default floating uh, what's the default floating point type in C plus plus? A default floating point type? What is the default floating point type? So if I do 1.0, auto X equals 1.0, what type is X? Okay, double. Good. If I take the largest unsigned integer and I add one to it, what happens? So by, by largest, do you mean the type? Or are, you, are you saying like a, let's say a... a just pick size t, I guess. If you take a size, yeah, t, pick size t, you know, just the numeric limits max yeah. size t, and you add one to it, what happens? Yeah. It just wraps to zero. Okay. What if I take the largest signed integer and I add one to it? So it's technically UB, but it'll, like, in all reality, it'll just wrap to the, what is it, std, I don't know if it's std min or std lowest. It is UB, so you, you can't expect that to happen, but you're right. Yeah. Um... That, that might happen, it might not happen, but it is UB. Mm. Um, what happens if I have a vector of size 2 and capacity 2, and I get an iterator to its first element before calling pushback with a third element? What might, is, is anything suspect there? Absolutely. What yeah, is you're suspect? Gonna just, just a, you're going to have a dangling pointer to the first element because the fact that it's at capacity means that when you call pushback it has to be resized and i, I guess it, it may or may not be dangling because if it reallocates like if it just extends the uh you know, allocated block i guess it's probably the wrong term but it it might still be valid but it, it's it i think it invalidates the iterator like by, by the standard yeah that's right what would you do before creating that vector, knowing that you're going to want to add a third one in order to prevent that iterator from being invalidated. I think, can you still, I don't know if you can still call reserve on an, a vector that has elements in it already. Uh, if not, it'd be... This is I before you add the first two elements. Oh, okay. So yeah, you could just call reserve yeah. and, and ensure you have the capacity that you need. Yeah. What API call, this is a less known API call, what, AP, what API call would you make if you wanted, if you had more capacity than you wanted and you wanted to shrink the capacity to equal the size? In other words, I have a capacity of four and a size of two, but I mm -hmm. actually want a capacity of two and a size of two. Without looking at CPP reference, yeah, I don't remember the... That, like I know, I know what you're talking about, but I don't know what the name of it is. Okay. Um, gosh, I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry. That's okay. I haven't used it once, but yeah, I just I know that either. it exists. Uh, shrink to fit, and it's a suggestion, so the compiler doesn't need to honor it. Yeah, like it doesn't have to. Yeah. So if I have an array, let's say a, a const char array of size 20 characters. Okay? Mm -hmm. What is the 20th character? Uh, it should be the null terminator if, if nothing's going wrong. Okay. Now, well, if, let's say I, you... you're right. Let's say I pass that const char array into a template that takes it by copy. Okay. What is the type of that array inside that method? 
So it's template type name T, foo, uh -huh. T. I mean, it, it should still be like a, a, I guess it's basically gonna be a char point, or if it's const, it's gonna be a const char pointer, right? Maybe. So the the original type was an array, but you're saying it's in the method, it's gonna be a pointer? Yeah, because if it, if it, it, not a stood array, right? Like just a yes, square bracket just a, array? Just a square bracket array. Yeah, array. so that's just, that's just gonna, I, I believe, I guess I don't know for sure how it works with templates, but it's just gonna decay to a pointer. That's right, okay, good. Yeah. What does the inline keyword do? It has two uses. Oh, so it makes it to where you can have it like you're telling the compiler that it's it's okay to have multiple definitions that are I guess like for the file to be not the file so for that thing to be defined in multiple translation units so long as the, I think so long as the definitions are the same and then so far as like inlining I think it gives the compiler like a I don't remember the term, but like when it's going to inline it, it effectively gives it a score and you kind of, you almost like handicap the score, I think. And... I'm not really sure what you're talking about score, but it's a suggestion to the compiler to mm -hmm. actually copy the, the contents of the function directly mm -hmm. to where the call site is. Yeah. And at the same time, you're right, it allows you to, I'm not sure if subvert's the right way, but kind of like... Get around, get around the one bit. definition rule. Yeah. As, yeah, opposed, to it being, as opposed to it being redefined in every translation unit that that .h file exists in or is included mm -hmm. in. Let me ask you this. Let's say you have class A and class B. Mm -hmm. Class A defines a virtual method called foo that prints a number one. Class B overrides it and prints a number two. Okay. Now, I pass an object of type B to a method that takes a, a, a reference and calls foo. Okay. So what's printed? One or two? Oh, I feel like I just watched the video on this the other night, but I can't remember for sure. I think it's... Uh, so two is in B, right? I, I two is in think B. It's, I think it's B because that's the actual like type of the object rather than the, like what the reference is saying. I, I'm probably wrong on that. I'm going to go with B, with two, though. No, two is right. It is? Okay. Yeah. Now... What if I didn't take it by reference? I took it by and, value. Well, if you're, yeah, I guess if you're defining it as a as an A, it's it's gonna call the one in A, so it'd be one then. Right, you? and that's the concept of slicing. It's when a copy okay. of the base class is made, and so you okay. don't get that polymorphic behavior. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking of like slice and rust, my bad. Yeah, I know slice has right, rust has slices too, which is like a span. Speaking mm -hmm. of span, what is a span in C++? Just a, a pointer and an array, or a, a, a pointer and a size to a contiguous block of memory. Yeah. Um, what's a shared pointer? Uh, so uh, a smart pointer where the allocated object has multiple, or can have multiple owners. Okay. And what's... Like said, it's it's lifetime is controlled by by multiple uh, objects. And how's that memory managed? So what what's constructs or how does what's the what does the internals of a shared pointer look like? It's a full disclosure. I didn't notice until watching one of your videos the other day. But the the control block is actually what effectively handles everything. Okay. And so how big is the shared pointer? So the shared pointer itself, you have the I think it's 16 bytes because you have a pointer to the control block and a pointer to the object being managed. Yeah. Um, there is another class that's a friend of a shared pointer in most shared pointer implementations. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that class is? Just a weak pointer? Yeah. Or, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, listen, dude, I don't know who's not giving you a chance, but they should be because you're better than most people that work professionally with C++. I haven't seen any of your code, so I can't talk about code quality, but some of these people that are in chat have been listening, have been studying C++ in school for four years, and they don't know half this stuff, which is why they're watching, which is good, but still, they don't, they don't know this. So I'm going to do this for you for free. Send me your resume to thecodingjesus at codingjesus.com. I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to give you advice. Now, send me two versions, a PDF, and also send me a Google Doc that I can write comments in. 
Okay, I'll look at you that for free um, tomorrow or Saturday. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I'm more than happy to pay for time too. I just wanted no, to try just, and catch you. No, just that, that's do. fine. I'll do it Thank for free. You. I'll look at that. I'm not going to spend like two hours reviewing it. I'll probably spend like 15, 20 minutes. But I just want to see what I can do to help you in terms of what you need to kind of change to be looked up. Because like you, you have the knowledge. You have the knowledge at least for an intern. So at least for like a chance. Even an intern that like, honestly, like I've asked you questions about things I'd ask an intern at a quant firm. So, and you did a really good job. So I would even give you points and uh, that's that tier of a company. And so, yeah, I would need to see what sort of projects you're working on too. I can kind of give you advice there. Okay. And if I were you, I'd also contribute to open source projects because you can also get a lot of validation there for your work. Okay. And that can also help you build up your resume. So like, I'm interested in cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and part of that interest involves contributing to Monero. So I work with people that are a lot better than me at C++ on Monero and I contribute code to that project. And it's an avenue for me to like, write code for something that I enjoy doing personally, become a better developer. And then you also gain that experience of like, I'm working in a more professional setting with a team. Gotcha. So you can add okay. that to your resume. Okay. Yeah, I think that you'll see it when I send it to you, but I, th I think part of my problem is that I'm, I'm somewhat aimless because I don't have a specific field that I'm targeting. Yeah. Um, so that's that's probably part of the problem, but we can we can discuss that further. And I, I'm like I say, I'm more than happy to pay for your time. I was looking at your your like Calendly stuff and everything like that, but I just I happened to get lucky and catch you tonight. And again, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, yeah, no problem, man. I'm gonna go a step further. I'm gonna give you also lifetime access to get cracked, so you can practice to prepare for interviews, and that'll give you access to my Discord as well. So um, you can then all be, like pick people's because you're a, you're a high quality um, candidate in my opinion. So you can then also talk to other people and learn from their journey, and then um, kind of develop your own skill set in interviewing and kind of see what the market's looking like and speak to other people there. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah.